Welcome to Envisioning Success, the weekly podcast that's your prescription for business clarity. In today's episode, we dive into the transformative power of speaking your avatar's language with Laura DiBenedetto and Julia Becker-Collins. Learn why understanding your audience's pain points is key to solving their problems and discover the art of crafting messages that goes beyond buy my stuff, addressing the deep needs and desires of your avatar. Hello, boils and ghouls. This is Laura Di Benedetto. I am your hostess with the mostest, joined by the also hostess with the mostest, Julia Becker Collins. You're listening to Envisioning Success. This is a show about helping you make a truckload of money while you have fun doing it. The show caters to leaders, entrepreneurs, business owners, and we're going to help solve a lot of marketing conundrums and business stuff, stuff that holds you back. The show is lovingly sponsored by the nice people at Vision Advertising. You can check us out online at vision-advertising.com. Friendly reminder, if you like this show, throw us a like, definitely a subscribe, share, the, and uh, you know, leave a review, do all the things. There we go. Smash I got that out of the way. Yeah. So this month we're talking about mm, profitable communication, tailoring messages to your avatar. Last month we talked about avatars. And the avatar, it's not the big blue people. Avatars are uh, your ideal customers, people you really want to sell to, the people you really like to sell to. The last episode, we talked about what do you say to them? What do you talk to them? Now that you know who they are, what do you say? So this episode is going to build on that. And we're going to be focusing on crafting messages that really help you to meaningfully connect with these folks. We got a lot of stories from the trenches, like we always do, because hello. Uh, And um, I think you're going to really like this one. So today we're going to be talking about breaking down the art of creating the messages uh, that resonate and build lasting relationships, because guess what? That's how you sell stuff, even products. Absolutely. People buy from people. They don't buy from companies. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of like the, the idea of money, right? Money only exists because we say that little pieces of paper with dead people on them has value. Like we've all agreed that they have value, right? So, but it's just an idea. Same thing with companies. Companies are just an idea. And it's, it's, it's essentially a collection of human beings that are like, oh, okay, we're, we're a company now. Well, okay. So if you understand that people use money that doesn't exist to buy from companies that don't exist so they can do business with human beings. That's really the main message here. So that's, you know, I, I think some people might take this wrong. So I'm going to really try to couch this really well. Um, it's important that you speak from the heart when you are marketing your brand, you could be a trash company, you could be a, a law firm, you could be anything. But speaking from the heart, it's not just emotional, warm and fuzzy. It's sincerity. It's being honest. It's being very, very transparent and just very open. And that's what we mean by speaking from the heart. And that's where I'd like to begin. Julia, what are your thoughts? Well, you know that uh, transparent communication is my love language. That and canceling meetings. I was going to say. You have I know. I know. I know. Uh, but, you know, at Vision Advertising, one of our core values is transparent, honest, open communication. So not only internally, but externally with our clients. Uh, an example is that, you know, I have a conversation with a client. This actually happened. They were interested in doing marketing on TikTok, which would not be good for their avatar. And also they didn't have the budget for And so I said to them very clearly, like, yes, I hear you. You know, I listened. Um, but I don't think it's a good use of your money to move into that because it's not where the person you're trying to sell to is going to be. And also the juice isn't worth the squeeze on that. Um, I could take your money. I could sell that to you, but I don't think it's a good idea. So, you know, the way that I show my love for clients is by telling them what they should and shouldn't do and being really open and honest. Um, And that's one of the reasons people buy from us is because we're not just trying to sell them, you know, a um, cookie cutter plan that maybe has worked for other people and we're not really diving into their needs. We really try to understand what's working for them and what's not working for them. So, you know, you need to understand your 
ideal client's love language. So if you're trying to sell to me, cancel meetings with me. But <laughs> <laughs> your ideal client oh, probably... Right. So maybe it's uh, an ideal client that um, really appreciates seeing the people behind the company. Maybe it's an ideal client that really likes to see how things are made, et cetera. So mm -hmm. showing that, you know, the transparency, but also saying what you're good at, and what you're not good at. Not everybody's good at everything. No, I keep getting reminded of this every single day of my life <laughs> when I try to do new stuff. Hey, do you know how to make that? No, I don't. I'm going to Google it. So. <laughs> You know, the idea of from the heart communication um, in your messages from your statement has a lot to do with not just pre-marketing, but it's also post-marketing. Like mm -hmm. for us and a lot of service companies are the same way. Their messages are consistent, like before someone becomes a client uh, and after they become a client, like they're just consistent. And that's a really important thing. So for us, we're super transparent. We're super honest. We've got a really stupid sense of humor, both, both of us. Me's mine's probably much lamer. Um, and I feel really good about this. I embrace the dad joke, but you know, the, the thing about, um, the way we like to do things is we're just super honest all the time, no matter what. And we speak from the heart and like, Julia, like what you're saying, like, you know, you know, I, I, I could totally take your money, but it doesn't serve you. And, you know, for us, one of our messages is service first. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know Julia, you talk a lot about servant leadership while it's not just the staff. Our job is to lead our clients as well. So we have a huge ethos of, um, servant leadership here that extends to every pocket of the business. Um, so the thing about sincerity when it shows up in your messaging, um, what you're saying to people is, I care about you. People mm -hmm. want to be respected. They want to be cared about. People are so, so sick of being made irrelevant. Oh, please hold for the next customer support representative. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're on hold. You get somebody in a different country who doesn't want to help you, who doesn't like you, who would rather see you dead than help you on that call. Um, that That's not good service, right? So mm -hmm. I'm noticing there's a huge mm, swell of demand for smaller businesses um, and getting away from big businesses, which is honestly, if you're listening to this show, this is probably really on point for you. Um, people are craving respect. They're craving mm -hmm. being cared about and someone actually giving them love. Like, so my other company, I keep mentioning it. Um, we write handwritten thank you notes with every single order that goes out the door. People are like gobsmacked. Is that a $5 word? Um, I'll give you $3. So we're bargaining now, huh? How about four? Damn. All right. No. So I'll take the three bucks. So, but they're, they're just really like struck by, oh my God, I feel appreciated. It's so sad that our standards of care as a society are as low as they are. It's a great opportunity for you as a business owner and as a business leader, because you can literally do what 50 years ago would have con been considered the bare minimum. And you're a rock star today. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. you can infuse that into your messaging and make it really clear. I care. So whatever your solution is to whatever problem your avatar has, sincerity and really expressing genuine concern. Now, does it mean that every single person on your staff is going to care? No, you can't manufacture care. But if the company and the, the overall ethos of the company and the driving force behind it is a genuine concern, lead with that. Right. A good example of that, like you said, with the handwritten thank you notes, I buy, um, you know, workout headbands from a small company. Everything's handmade. Um, it's a mom and pop uh, setup. And with every order, they send a thank you, like a handwritten thank you note. They'll send you a sticker, you know, which just is helpful to them because then you're a brand ambassador of, you know, their brand. You're basically advertising for them um, by putting the sticker on something. But then you feel as the client that you got something for free and you're excited about it. Um, they reached out to me last year and over the holidays uh, to send me a coupon code for being such a valued customer, et cetera, et cetera. That's so, awesome. yeah, it's great. It makes you feel seen as the client. Mm hmm. 
What also makes you feel seen is powerful storytelling. When mm -hmm. you tell stories of transformation, you tell stories of what someone experienced, you know, before their problem got solved, uh, telling stories during, telling stories after, you know, telling the entire story of before, during, and after. Like when you're able to share the customer journey with other prospective customers and also your current customers, um, you're able to craft more powerful messages because you're not just saying, buy my stuff. You're not talking at people. You're talking right. with them. You're, you know, I mean, shoot, the whole reason why we have fairy tales was to basically keep the kids out of the woods, you know, <laughs> seriously, like all the Grimm's fairy tales. Like, what do you think that was for? A lot of the stuff with, um, I don't know if it was the Grimm brothers or another one, but it like originated in the black forest. I'm probably mixing up my, um, fairy tale people, but there was a lot of things that were designed to keep the kids safe. And that's where a lot of these fairy tales like Cinderella, like Hansel and Gretel actually came from. Um, because human beings learn through stories. Mm -hmm. And it's more relatable. So, you know, the idea of storytelling or the term storytelling is, I feel like overused these days. It's such a buzzword, especially in the marketing world. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason storytelling is important or how, whatever word you want to use around it is, you know, what Laura said that, you know, people relate better to stories. And if you've been listening to our podcast and you go back to any episode, we're telling stories uh, from clients, from sales, from previous careers, et cetera. Um, right. People learn better when there's a story rather than just an ethereal I'm using the same dollar, same $5 word this episode. Cool. Here's another five. I know. Um, just, rather than ethereal facts or strategies. Strategy and theory is really hard to wrap your brain around. But if you mm -hmm. can see it in action, if you can hear about it in action, you understand it better. Mm -hmm. So um, for the listeners that don't know, I have uh, more of a Christian faith and Julia has more of a Jewish faith. And... I don't know about um, the Torah, but I do know about the Bible. Guess what it's filled with? Stories. Mm -hmm. The Bible is meant to be a teaching tool to teach people about God and the relationship they're supposed to have with God and the behaviors they're supposed to embody. Is is the Torah the same way? Similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but you're teaching through stories. So mm -hmm. we teach our staff through stories. We teach our clients. We teach our kids um, Julia and I have furry children. They don't listen to stories. So but this applies to humans. No, the story my dog tells in her head is I'm the greatest girl that's ever existed. Give me your dinner. Specifically if it's pizza. Oh, mm -hmm. doggo mm -hmm. likes pizza. All she right. loves pizza. Loves pizza. I mean, to be fair, so do I. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. Well, you get the idea here. I mean, it's really about Still, the telling stories and getting um, getting people to really lean in. The great thing also about stories is it. God, you ever sit through like a rotten lecture in college or something? I've sat through my fair share where it's just like I would rather die. You just don't want to be there. Um, but like, who wants to sit through that? It sucks. But when you're told a story, it becomes fun. It's actually why social media is so effective because it's like short form storytelling. You can actually yep. have an entire story told inside of one second because mm -hmm. you've got the music, the, the, the imagery, you've got the expression on the person's face. Like stories don't have to be long. They can be very simple conveyances of ideas. And, um, I, I think that's another thing that I really want to probably clarify for you is storytelling does not have to be long form writing. That's not what I mean. What I mean by storytelling and what Julia and I are trying to convey here is that storytelling can be done sometimes through a simple eyebrow raise. It can be a nuance. It can be uh, graphics. It can be social media. It can be a tiny little video clip. It can be anything. Um, the duration is not the point. The medium is not the point. Make your point. Using <laughs> any tool you like is the point. Absolutely. Very pointy. <laughs> yep. So the thing about um, 
all of this, the storytelling, being sincere, really being like heartfelt and genuinely caring about the people that you'd like to attract and that you have attracted is um, finding your authentic voice and then sticking with it. Um, that can be really, really challenging, um, especially if I don't know, let's say you're not very good at this marketing stuff. That's okay. We, the, the, the whole reason why this company exists is because there's a whole bunch of people in the world that are not very good at this stuff. So if you, if you have a marketing company, maybe it's us, maybe it's not us, whatever. If you have someone, they're going to help you to find your authentic voice for you. And they're going to help you with that continuity. But let's say you're doing it yourself. Um, or you're trying to get your staff to do it. You have to be really clear about what works. You got to take notes. You need to figure out the right brand voice. Like Julia and I, you, I mean, you know, you and I have figured out what our brand voice is. It is intelligent. It's clear. It's sometimes funny. It's very, you know, sometimes sarcastic, but it's also very serious, very intelligent. And it's not, not using eighth grade English, probably 12th grade English, because we don't want to, you know, make our avatar feel stupid and use like jargon, but it's, it's an approachable professionalism Yep, that I really, really like. And it's something that, although we have different people on the team writing different things for us, the same standard applies, even if it's a different execution every time. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And to speak to the point that you made earlier about, you know, having the, um, the messaging authentic inside the company, outside the company, after you sold to the client, before you sold to the client, all of that matters as well in order to help retain clients and bring in new clients. But also the other part is that whatever your voice is and the messaging is external to the company, it shouldn't be jarring to somebody once they start speaking to you. It should feel like a seamless transition. So yeah. you're external communication sounds very similar to how you actually speak to people. Point. Yeah. So that it doesn't I don't feel even like know if it is a transition, to be honest with you. It's mm -hmm. just like, it's just more of the same. Right. It should be feel like an extension of the same conversation. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's such a, such a good point. No, I love that. So, um, I would actually really love to just talk about the the team and how we've been executing a lot of our marketing lately and how we're taking that consistent brand voice and having different human beings execute it in their way. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to just hear um, what the adoption process was like. So you're in operations. We've said in earlier episodes, I suck at operations and I have been lovingly booted from that department, which is totally fine. I belong and thrive elsewhere. But when we think about this, you know, we've got um, some really, really fantastic human beings on the team who think and communicate differently. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They're all kicking ass right now. Yes, absolutely. I mean, everybody is good at different things. And I say this when I bring on a new client, I don't want the person who's coding the website to be the same person who takes your photos because it's very different parts of your brain and people are good at very different things. Just mm -hmm. like I'm good at operations and sales and HR, but you don't want me taking your photos <laughs> or doing graphic design. It's pretty bad. So um, everybody's good at different things. So that means that people work on different projects. They work on different parts of our marketing. They work on different parts of our clients' marketing. Um, mm -hmm. But making sure that everybody's on the same page with the goals, everybody's bought into the long-term and short-term goal and understanding who we're speaking to, right? For this episode, previous episode, and then all of last month, we've been talking about avatars. We have those conversations internally as well. Who are we trying to speak to? Does this blog speak to that person? And part of this is it doesn't need to be perfect, right? It, Thank you, know, you for saying that. No, seriously. Do you know how many people get completely just hung up? Oh, it needs to be perfect. No, it doesn't. Right. There's a time I say that. that. Just ain't it. Mar we're, we're doing marketing. We're not curing cancer. Like if sometimes you just need to get it out into the world and see what happens with it and, you know, review it later and make decisions later. But some things are learned by doing. And if that means that you're writing blogs or writing content for your website or doing other external communications while you still refine that voice, that's mm. okay. 
you need to remember that things on the internet and digital world are living. You don't expect that website to always have the same content. The blog should be updated. You should be putting new blogs in there, et cetera. Social media posts, post something else, et cetera. Just keep moving with it and don't get bogged down in getting things to be perfect. But it definitely goes through a refining process with mm-hmm. our staff. So, you know, do, you know, I've had questions. Do you think this learning? Takes, I'm sorry? Iterative learning. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, they come to me to see, you know, do you feel like this speaks to the avatar, asking for support, asking for help, asking for other people on the team, their colleagues to review things, um, using the correct terminology. Um, you know, we really try to speak to that C-suite executive. And Laura and I are the only C-suite executives currently on the staff. So sometimes they need to ask, well, what would you say here? you know, what's terminology that makes sense to you? And that's okay. Asking questions is okay. You need to ask for help. That's okay. Reading and learning from other sources as well. Um, But then also trying to have that cohesive plan with a central location through project management software. We use Asana, um, making sure people can stay on the same track, understand what deadlines are due, um, communicate really easily, et cetera. Mm Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. I love our team. I appreciate that they have grown in a really um, rapid manner. I think the um, necessity of movement forward and not perfection has really been helpful to them. And I think for anyone listening, it'll be helpful for your company as well. Like, nothing's permanent. You don't need to just be like, oh no, I put something out there and now I'm dead. No, just post new stuff tomorrow and do better every day. And and that's really what we can do um, for all of our clients as we create that learning process when they're doing things on their own. We provide education, but we also learn when we represent people too. So it's, I think there needs to be greater patience and I mean, across the board, but you know, the sincerity, storytelling and um, authenticity of voice, that's where it's at. Absolutely. I agree. You want to put a bow on it? Yeah, there's the bow. So thanks everybody for listening. This was heart to heart crafting messages that truly connect. And this is all about helping you make a ton of money and having fun while you do it. Um, the show is sponsored by so- Nope, it's not. That's the name of my other company. I've done it again. <laughs> sponsored by Vision Advertising. You can check us out at vision-advertising.com. And um, we would love to be able to help you. We offer free consults. So if you think your marketing sucks, you're probably right. <laughs> and we can help you figure out what's wrong with it um, and help you get it right. I mean, listen, Julia's over there having a heart attack because I just spoke truth to you. And uh, there you know- it is. The first step is acceptance of the problem. (laughs) I know. Anyway, thank you so much. We're excited to help you envision your success. And uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Julia. Uh, She's Julia Becker Collins. I'm Laura DiBenedetto. And we'll see you next time in perfect timing, knowing when to share your message. 